his throne. Almighty Father, we worship and adore you. We give you thanks this day, especially this hour, when we gather as your people to sing praises to your name and to learn of you from your holy word. Lord Jesus Christ, breathlessly, we wait for your coming. The house has been made ready. The tree is trimmed with beautiful lights and sentimental ornaments. The guests have been invited. All of the ingredients for a Christmas meal have been purchased. Our hearts are filled to overflowing with love for you and for one another. Help us always to remember those who are less fortunate than we. Those who may not have shelter. Those who may wonder where their next meal is coming from. And we also remember that there are those in the world who are not feeling so joyous at this time of year. We pray for their peace internally and the comfort that only you can give to be theirs this Christmas season. Come into our waiting hearts that we might celebrate the miraculous day of your birth. Welcome, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name that we ask and your sake that we pray. Our Old Testament Amen. reading this morning is from the book of 2 Samuel. We're going to look at chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 11, and then verse 16. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, he said, Here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains in the tent. And Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I've not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I've been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. And wherever I've moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of the rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and I appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I've been with you wherever you've gone, and I've cut off all your enemies from before you. And now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you, that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we remember those that were mentioned this morning and those who are in our bulletin on our prayer list as well, let us continue that mode of prayer in our mind as we sing, uh, Once in Royal David's City.
pray for those that are sick. You've heard the spoken, the unspoken request. Those that are not here this morning, Lord, we ask you to be with them. We should dig in that, Lord, and bring them to you and bring them back to us soon, Lord. We feel that we Lord, this morning we pray for our country. Our country is in dire distress, as I've said before. I pray this for this transition for power to go on the Lord. I pray for peace with that thing. Yes. You watch over us through this day. Guide us through this day and through this week as we remember. As we remember what Christmas is all about when we celebrate your Christ's birth. Lord, again, I pray for our military. I pray for our firefighters, our police officers, our doctors and nurses. Ask you to be with us too again through this day and through this week as again as we remember Christmas. You have some directions to everything that we do and say. For our second service. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, the scripture I'm going to read this morning is Luke 1, verses 26 and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee. 27, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. To a virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of thing this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and be and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
see. Our epistle reading for this morning's service is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our communion hymn this morning as we prepare our hearts to come before the Lord's table, a central part of every worship service that we have here, preparing our hearts as we sing together silent night, number 145.
Christ sent with his disciples at the Passover meal. And he took the simple items he had ever passed over to them, and then bread. It was a reminder of the Israelite escape from Egypt. And he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. And he gave a special meaning when he said, This is my body. Eat the bread. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Go stern and fellowship and pass the peace with one another. Smile and I'm thankful. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody. At this time we're going to light our Advent candles um, and beginning with the love Advent candle. Our scripture reading for that is from Luke 2, uh, very appropriate, uh, verses 10 through 14. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, and suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. May God have blessing and understanding to the reading of His Word. And today we relight the candles of hope and peace and joy, and now we light the candle of love. We celebrate the announcement of the coming King and the greatness of God's love revealed through the Christ child. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for that revelation. 
in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we praise you for the greatness of your love. Help us to always share your love with others and to live our lives more Christ-like every day. In his name we pray. Amen. And normally, when a church would gather together, either on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, uh, we would like the Christ candle. So this, since this will be our last service together as a church family before those days, uh, we're going to light the Christ candle today as well. Our scripture reading for that, also from Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. That was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everybody went to their own town to register. So Joseph, he also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. Well, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave her birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace on those whom his favor rests. Well, when the angels had left and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And again, may God add blessing and understanding to the reading of his word. And now we light the Christ candle and we rejoice in the promise of God that his promise has been fulfilled in the coming of that baby in the manger. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join in the triumph and joy of Christmas. And as your love has been revealed in all of its fullness and glory, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day and also throughout the coming year. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Oh, may the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul. Oh. 
are these people, Mary and Joseph. They're nobody special from nowhere in particular. Why? They're no more important than you or me. And that is exactly the point. God acts through ordinary human beings like you and me. Ordinary human beings that trust God enough to undertake extraordinary missions. Remember Mission Impossible? They would hear their mission if you choose to accept it. God does that for us each and every day before we even put our feet on the floor. He has a mission for us, but it's up to us to choose it. But you know, we don't even want God to act this way. We want God to appear in person, unmediated by anybody else, even by angels, as awesome and terrifying as Gabriel. His wings drifted as snow, it says, and his eyes as flame. But that's not how God ever does anything. God seldom comes to us directly except in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And even then, it's only as God incarnate, God in human flesh, being that he was criticized while he was walking on earth for being a nobody himself. To us, God comes through the waters of baptism, through the bread and the wine of holy communion that we experience each week, through the hand of a loved one or even the hand of a stranger. Mostly, God comes to us in ordinary ways, through ordinary people. It's even true in the case we have here this morning. Although God chooses the extraordinary means of sending the archangel Gabriel, God still announces the divine plan is to come to us for salvation through the body of a peasant girl from the little village of Nazareth. Of course, that plan is only going to work if she is willing for it to be so. Only if she can find the courage to surrender to God's will and say yes. Only if she can find the faith that she needs to trust God's plan. What a weight hangs in the balance there, right? What immensity depends on the faith of a young peasant woman? What young girl is prepared to make decisions of that magnitude? What tremendous secret waits upon the answer, hangs upon her every word? Mary has lived her life in the community of people who believe that there's a special relationship between God and them. And they have affirmed that the Word of God is for them, the action of God is for them. They believe their story, the story of this community, day in and day out, through slavery, wilderness, kingdoms, being in exile. That's the story of God working through them to accomplish His divine purposes on earth. God is trusting God's people to have raised Mary in the right way. To have taught her the story of faith. To have taught her to recognize God's hand at work in her life. That's what we hope to teach our children and our grandchildren every day. God is trusting God's people to have raised her so that she would understand what she was being faced with and the decision she needed to make. The great archangel announced God's purpose. The heavenly messenger posed the question and the girl is troubled. And now heaven and earth wait. Mary doesn't understand what's going on. The great archangel announced all these things and she says, how shall this be? It's a mystery. Gabriel assures Mary that God will overshadow her in the Holy Spirit. But you know, Mary senses the kind of terror that comes from being in God's presence rather than the horror that comes from being in the presence of evil. You've often heard me say we should be fearful of God, but it's fear in terms of respect. And honor to him, not fear in terms of being afraid like we would think of being in abject terror of something that's scary. That's where Mary was in her life. She surrenders her assured future as the wife of a carpenter named Joseph to play the unknowable part God wills for her as mother of the Savior. How many times do we have to hear this basic gospel truth to learn it? We've been waiting for God so long in our lives. We've sung many hymns praying for the advent of God in our lives, but we've yet learned that the word of God addressed to Mary through the archangel Gabriel is the same word that's addressed to you and I every day. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. How many of us this morning understand and realize that God is with us every day, wherever we go? Let it be according to your word. That should be our answer, just like it was Mary's answer. 
Like Mary, we can't understand what's going on in our lives sometimes. We can't understand what's going on in the world today with the pandemic. We have no clue what God's purpose for all of this is. But we can under, only say and understand, let it be according to your word. We just have to remember that we're members of a community of faithful people whose life story is the story of God's action on behalf of the whole world. We're moving forward on the legacy of those who came behind us. Many, many faithful ones from this church who've gone on to be with the Lord, they've taught us the right way. They've taught us the things that we need to know to make those right decisions for God's plan in our lives, in the life of this church. God has no other hands, hearts, and minds in the world but ours. Like Mary, we can only know that if it's God's will to be accomplished in this world, then I have to have a part in it. I was only... How many of you like the theater? You like good theater, you know, good theater, community theater, you ever seen plays and stuff like that? Well, I got... I had a group of friends who were really into that. This has been 20 some years, 20 plus years ago. And uh, anybody know the little town players in Bedford that uses the Elks home? So they said, you need to come out and be in the next play. And I was like, I'm not an actor. Okay. I might act out and act up, but I'm not an actor. So they said, no, come on, it'll be fun. So I believe this was 1997, and I said, all right, I'll go. And so I went, I took a piece of music to sing and want you to audition, and so I sang, and they put me in the cast. I told myself, I'm not big on remembering stuff. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, to be honest with you. So I have lots of notes everywhere. We were just talking about that before church, sticky notes everywhere, homework, church, you name it. But I said, I'll, you know, I'll be glad to sing and help. So it was a musical, fortunately. So it was Oklahoma. We all know Rogers and Hammerstein's Oklahoma. So they gave me a part, and I think I was a farmer, Ike. And uh, so they dressed me up in farmer clothes. And I did have a few lines. Most of them sing, but I had a few lines. And so what I would do, I took these little three by five index cards, and I wrote my lines on them. And I stuck them in my shirt pocket behind my vest, and I would stand over here in the wings. And just before I had to run on to say my line, I was like, Okay, da, 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 da. stick my pocket, I'd run on, and I'd say my lines, and then I'd run back. So I didn't have much of a part in that play, but I did my part. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you today. In God's master plan for the world, we all have a part to play. Now, you may be standing in the wings feeling unsure and nervous and reading your lines off of a cue card, but you know what? You have a part to play, and it's an important part. And when you run out on the stage and you do your part, you're going to do your best, and it's going to be effective. It's going to work for somebody. It's going to help people see that you're part of the bigger cast of God's people doing His plan and His will and His work on earth. God always says, Hail, favored one. He's talking to you. He says, The Lord is with you. The Lord is sure with me in the wings of that theater because I was scared to death, but I went out and did what I was supposed to do. That's what He asks us to do as His people. For the next week, as we go about our work days and we take care of last-minute Christmas plans, shopping, if you have any of that left to do, errands, grocery getting, whatever you name it, as we go about our, day, our daily responsibilities, let us remember Gabriel's greeting in our minds and our hearts. Hear Gabriel greet us with those terrifying words of hope and salvation. God is waiting for the holy child of Bethlehem to be born in you and me. He can't be born in us unless we're, number one, prepared, and number two, willing. Like Mary, we have to give ourselves over to God, our souls, our bodies, completely. The Holy Child can't be born in us unless we, like Mary, find faith and courage. And where did she find it? In the words, Hail, favored one, that's you and me. The Lord is with you. Heaven and earth wait. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the blessings of this holy Advent season. You are the source of life, of hope, of all good things. We look forward to the coming of the light of Christ at Christmas. Help us to turn toward that light in our lives. We rejoice at the gift of your Son who taught us to love in your name. May we be a people of peace and justice all the days of our lives.
And may we always be ready and willing to do that which you've called us to do, to make your plan work here on earth. And to this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. God, for our people, we pray for situations both near and far. Comfort hearts. Send your abiding peace to people that they might feel your nearness. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Be with those who need to be encouraged by your work that's evident in their lives. We still continue our prayers for those who are on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our caregivers, our law enforcement, EMTs, firefighters, for those who have to report to work every day in this pandemic, for those who are worried about their loved ones. We pray for a safe and quick distribution of the vaccine for the coronavirus and ask that you keep us all safe and healthy in this week ahead. And to this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for our world also. We ask that you look down in mercy upon us. Help us to come and to know and share a spirit of peace across this globe. To know love and cooperation among the peoples and the nations of earth. We pray for our current leaders and those elected who will take office next month. We pray for our president, our senators, our representatives in Congress. We pray for Ralph, our governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia here. We pray for Bradley, the mayor of Vinton, and our town council members too. We ask that you help them all to seek your face this Christmas time. To make right and just choices and decisions that affect us all. To this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. God, we pray for your church on earth. As we've just talked about, we are your people. We must know and do your will. We must be willing to that, to that voice, that command that comes to us. Give us daily strength and courage to do that. We ask, Lord, that you bless Terry, our general minister and president. We pray for Bill, our regional minister here in Virginia, and especially his son Tristan, as he will undergo cancer treatments in the near future. Wrap them in your loving arms and help them to sense your prayers from afar. We lift up all of our deacons, our deaconesses, our elders here at First Church, and all the work that they do, and for all of your members and friends here who carry forth your joyful word. To this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. And Lord, now as we close this service, we pray that you speak to each of us through your Holy Spirit. As we sing a hymn to your name, may hearts and lives be changed, and decisions of importance be made that are of an everlasting nature. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is, O Come All You Faithful, number 148. Please turn there and stand as you're able as we sing. If you need to make a decision, please come forward. Anything that you'd like to share with your church family, we'll be glad to rejoice along with you.
season is still the same, amen. So let us have a blessed Christmas. If you need it for any reason this week, please don't hesitate to give me a call. May uh, God bless each of you and your families and keep you safe. Let us uh, respond with our commissioning statement. I'll give our benediction and then we'll adjourn to our hearts. In the power of the risen Lord, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord, the world around you, and all of God's creation. And may God give you strength for your journey, the Holy Spirit give you wisdom for every decision, and Christ Jesus give you abiding faith for every task that lies ahead, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless and love you all.